97% load on that one leg, 40 on the, on the other, 1.4, 2.9. Increase this one more amp. See if we can do a see a five amp overload. Okay, five amps a little high. Let's go. No, five amps is good. All right, start at five. One hundred ten percent. Start eleven. Oh, there he goes. Alright, so it shut off. I started to reset it. I think the only way to reset it, if you have an overload, is to flip the switch off. So there you go. Warning code 28. And flip the, it's the EPS switch. Inside here. And then give it a second to re do whatever it wants to do. Helps if I actually turn it on. Okay. I'll start over again. Oh, we're at 106%. It's only 3.2 kilowatts. 3.3. Three, three. Oh, something kicked on. Oh, there you go. Maybe about 30 seconds. Right, I'm going to try to get up to 3K in one leg and see if I can uh, hold it there. So I already did a test at like 95% load and it uh, held it for until I stopped 30 minutes later. Um, while I'm here, let's go through and turn the fans up. I'm going to go down to the fans. Should be right there. Fan sets. I'm going to take up to 100%. See the slope is basically a curve as you, as it demands more cooling, it'll ramp up. Slope is enabled. I think fan two is for the uh, PV module, and fan one is for the the top two fans, which is the inverter, and the bottom fan is, right here is for the PV. So I sent them both at 100. And 
move its mayor. Bottom number two, I think. And these two work together. I think that's one. Alright, still hold 98, 99%. Gonna bump it up just a little bit more. All right. Well, while we wait for the power to go out, I'll swing around to the other side, and I'm finally working on the 18k and wiring it up mostly correct. Um, let me zoom out a little bit. The tight fit. So there's my box, wiring box, wires coming in. We got, oh, sorry for DC batteries. Um, that'll be PV when I get my metal conduit running. It's a flush mount with uh, nipples. Alright, so down here, it's my mess of junk. Awesome uh, cutting, biting, bending, whatever you want to call it. Oil, drill, drilling oil. All purpose metal work. Compound, lubricant. Anyway, so I have um, the Tygo transmitter in here. I have the Tygo, that's the CSA, and that would be the CCA. I may have them backwards or I may be completely wrong. So there's gonna be PV comes in, goes across, goes up, then the PV comes up through. Um, I'm trying to keep the DC separate from the AC. So the AC comes in here, I'll punch two holes in for load and grid. I'll run it conduit up and over to the sub panel. The battery com cable, I think I'm going to run one of these like that and just punch it through the side or maybe the back. Honestly, I'm thinking the back. Because I really don't want it to be over here. Yeah, I think I'll have it come in from the side. Or I could just punch it in, bring it in from the box. It really doesn't matter, I guess. I can just drop it through the... Anyway. Oh, in order to cut the holes, I was using a, a punch set. Here, I'll show you. Hey, how do you like that transition? Anyway. Um, Basically it goes up, and you have the bolt, and it pulls this from one side into the opening on the other side with a small threaded bolt or the larger threaded bolt for the larger sets. So, and when you're done, you're left with, da da da! Went to the holes. You know, I'm not sure if I like the way that it comes up and goes around. I think it's fine. I just don't like the look of it. But I believe these are I believe these are directional. So, load comes out the bottom. Anyway, it's technically the load. So, breaker up, on, load goes through, comes out, and goes up to the PV. Of course, there's a PV disconnect on the side. Um, let's see here, what do we got up here? So 
solar. Oh, it doesn't add them up. One, two, three, almost four thousand kilowatts. All right, that's my update. So here we are, about 10 minutes later, still running at 99, 2.97 kilowatts in we got, we're bringing two and a half on PV1, two, we don't want totals, so we're looking at that number right there, watt, volts, 2.8 and 2.3, so I'm make me do the math, but I'm going to say that's about 5,000 lots of solar coming in we have 50% lay load on one leg oh and 100% load on the other leg and I did set the fan speeds to 100 but it's it's cool coming out and it's not there's not like heat or, or it's not hot I should say actually while I'm here let me just turn the fan speeds down Oh, that's a nice little setting right there. You can control the neutral uh, ground. So if you want to bond it at the inverter or not. Uh, generator select, that's basically, I want to say your generator capacity. Oh, it's data charge. There's another one that does generator capacity. Let's leave that area. Uh, oh, fan set. Go down 20%. That's the lowest it lets you go. Slope is good. So there you go, set them down to 20%. The fans will still ramp up as needed. See, I set it at 100 to see if I get an extra load. But like I said, it's it's still cold coming through. Get out of there if we don't want that. So the battery's at 96%. Uh, my battery's turning at one. So we're pulling three, almost 3,000 on one leg. Uh, 45, we're pulling 4,500 watts from the inverter. We're charging at 1,000 and we're bringing in five. That's about right. I've noticed the uh, efficiencies around what they're claiming, 93% um, inverter to battery, battery to inverter. Um, I don't know how to check the MPPT, the 99% efficiency ratings, other than like, yeah, just not worth it. Uh, but yeah, as an inverter and inverter, the 93% is accurate. If the inverter is in standby, the idle consumption is 0.1 or 0 0.05 amps so 0.1 amp would be like five watts so they claim in standby it consumes less than 50 watts and i agree um also realize that when you get mpp or uh, solar coming in and solar going straight to the battery you're still going to have the seven percent loss or the 93 percent efficiency solar to the battery 93 solar to you know i don't know what solar load is Battery to load is 93%. So any any low voltage DC conversion is 93% with this unit. And that's just quick math. We can call it napkin math if you want. Um, oh, we're still running 93%. I'm going to call it good for its rated capacity. Uh, but as soon as you go over it, you only got like 5 to 10 seconds before it shuts off. 